All right, now, this is some big implications here. <laughs> this is real data. So let's think about this for a second. Why was this an observational study, not an experiment? It says up at the top somewhere, I think. Well, I don't even, actually I didn't say it, but it has to be. This has to have been an observational study. Why? Well, because experiments require the researcher to randomly assign treatment. So experiments require the researcher to randomly assign treatment, which in this case would have been free reduced lunch. In this case, it would be unethical by a large <laughs> by a large amount <laughs> to randomly assign free lunch now think about why it's not really a big deal if you just randomly give kids lunch sure but random assignment means you're not only assigning free lunch to some kids but you're assigning no free lunch to other kids Ah, and that's the problem, right? Because that would mean taking um, lunch away from poor and probably hungry children. And that would be the height of unethical, yes? Okay, maybe not the height, but it'd be on well on the, the ladder of unethical things to do, right? So that's why you, this can't be an experiment. An experiment requires the researcher to say, you get free lunch, you don't get free lunch, randomly. And that means that some hungry children would have their lunch, free lunches taken away from them. And that would not be ethical. And I will warn you, those kinds of questions crop up several times in the course. So you'll see those on different worksheets and so on. Um, it's very frequent that we can't do an experiment for ethical reasons. And sometimes it's thing, um, things like this, where you're taking away free lunch. Sometimes it has to do with like medical treatment. It's unethical to not give treatment, things like that. All right, now, why is it not possible to argue that a higher percentage of free reduced lunch causes the lower exam scores? Okay, so I just want you to see what this is saying. Higher percentage of free reduced lunch. So that's saying as X goes up, in other words, you're moving this way on the graph. So X goes that way. So as X increases, so you're moving to the right on the graph, right? X goes up then the lower exam scores, y goes down, which is right here. You can see y decreasing. That's the word decrease. There you go. So as x goes up, y goes down. Even though we see that, and it is a moderate negative relationship, there's a good correlation here, but it's not possible to argue that it causes the lower exam scores. Ah, this is leading us to a very important topic. And the key is this word causes. Causes is a problem. Causation is very hard to do because causation requires an experiment. You can't prove causation unless you can randomly assign the treatment, but you can't randomly assign this treatment because it would be unethical. Ah, so correlation, you've probably heard this phrase in maybe a science class or something is not causation. We see a relationship, and this is a real relationship. This is real data. So correlation is not causation, not causation, in an observational study, right? We just set up above, this had to be observational. Because why? Why do your teachers always say that? right? Your math science teachers, your math teachers, correlation is not causation. What are they talking about? Well, what they're talking about is that, take this real life context, there is a relationship between the percentage of kids at a school that are on free reduced lunch and the percent that pass the math exam. 
if you all of a sudden took that school take a school that's right over here and you just say nope no free lunch for anybody anymore we're going to move them way over here that won't mean that they automatically pass their math test right right because there's other things going on they're called lurking variables there are other factors affecting i was about to write factors <laughs> lurking variables right such as well in this case you can imagine schools that are over here with a high percentage of their kids on free reduced lunch would be poorer right they're in poorer neighborhoods they have um, bigger problems with health care bigger problems with finances bigger problems with right so poverty right? that's a lurking variable in this case so let's make a note of what a lurking variable is. A lurking variable is a variable that was not considered in the data set but is affecting both X and Y. Um, there are others. Um, you can also think of education status of the family, um, infrastructure. Um, are there is there good busing? Is there are there good um, well pipes bringing water into your house? Or are you having lead poisoning problems? I mean, there, there's lots of things that could be affecting what's going on in this situation. All right, I want to show people that use the TI-84 how to calculate the correlation coefficient. So, but if you're not using a TI-84, you can skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI-84 folks. <laughs> so we need to go to the TI-84. So let me go grab it. As always, we go to Stat, Edit, or Stat, Enter, and we have to enter the values. So 29 and so on. I'm going to pause this video and enter those values. I'll be right back. All right, I have all the values entered. So now we're going to go to Stat, Calculate, and we're going to choose number four. You can actually see number eight's an option as well. Um, they both work, so it's kind of just whichever one you like. But most people choose number four because that's what their algebra teachers generally have them do. Your X list is whatever list you had your variables in, or your X variable in. So I had it in list one, so list one is fine. And then list two is fine. And then I'm going to go down to Calculate and press Enter. And there you have it. So that's that. But then, oh no, oh my stars, we don't have the correlation coefficient. Whatever shall we do? So if you go to mode, that mode button, and you go down about, oh, this way, it's where it says stat diagnostics, and see how it's off right there? We need it to be on. So I'm going to arrow over to the on. I'm going to press enter. That should leave it on from now on. So now when I go to stat calculate number four, and press enter when I calculate there it is there's the co regression or correlation coefficient um, negative 0.688 at the bottom it should be on from this point on um, but you have to turn it on one time okay so make sure you turn it on and then it was stat calculate number four linear regression all right so let me go write that in the notes for you I guess I'll put it up here, kind of where the stat crunch instructions were. So if you're on a TI calculator, again, don't worry about the stat diagnostics thing. As long as you followed along, then you're fine. So you're going to go to stat regression, simple, or it's me, <laughs> sorry, stat calc. Sorry, I was looking at, you can tell I was looking at stat crunch. It was just, I have stat crunch on the brain. So stat calc number four, oops, that didn't come through. Number four, lin reg ax, oh my goodness, I can't write, ax plus b. That's the one we picked. <laughs> 